some nice freshly okay. pressed coffee. This is the way to go on safari. Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Shirley. And we are in Africa. Yes, we are. Oh my goodness, this is the most amazing place. We are on an incredible safari and we have amazing footage to share with you, don't we, Mark? Absolutely, you will not believe what we're gonna show you. That's right. We have animals that are literally close enough to kiss us. <laughs> That's right, close enough to lick your ear. <laughs> Let's show you. Oh, this is great. Come on, big one. Give yourself a little piece of the bark. There we go. Oh, this is. Oh, I got them both. This is great. Oh my god. Mm. The baby's laying on top of his tail. Yeah, there's a grooming. The whole thing, yes, I got the whole bloody thing. Look at that. Oh my god. One stallion, the stallion is here to the right, whereas the mares are then to the uh, the left of him. Easiest way to tell, if you look at um, him while he's wagging his tail, there's a thin black stripe between the cheeks of the rum. Right? If you look at the female then further to the right, you'll see it's a much wider black wedge. Yellow belt. You see the red bone is just that slightly more red color, but a thinner beak. And then the grey hornbill is just like it is in the name grey. And the one that we saw in Sri Lanka with the big knob on top of his bill, what's that one called again? I'm not sure. Oh. It's in Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> so they are omnivorous, they will eat the, uh, the fruits and seeds as well as that of insects. So they've got a very, very broad diet. So that's why they, they are so common. There's just so much. So when it comes to wildebeest, wildebeest is actually kind of like a slang name. Uh, so it's originally called a gnu. It's called a gnu because of the sound that it made. So when they first discovered it, it used to call out its name. It used to hear it. Mm. <laughs> this guy. Look at this guy. Wow. You see these two fluffy, fluffy youngsters here on the side of the two most <laughs> recent born. Horns are still just, just starting to peek out and develop. Look at this guy right in the front, he's got a bird cleaning his nostrils. But now, I mean, if you have a look, uh, as we've seen now with, with the male, that big crash helmet that we keep talking about, right? Yeah. Look at these ones that are laying down, flat, busy chewing next to the car. Look at, look at the top of the head. Oh yeah, that's female. They have that big crash helmet, that big swelling. I mean, you can see the one just there in the back in the middle. He's already got that split between the horns, that big boss. That's definitely a, a male. Oh, this one's showing me her teeth. That's so crazy how the ears are down under the horn. Really good vision. So what was the switch for again? 
uh, to, to give off the smell. Ah, uh, yeah. So, I mean, when it comes to wow. marking territory, that's the bigger reason for males, but females will do it so that males know where she is. Last year I fed them at the zoo in, in Sydney, oh, but yeah? this is the first one I've seen in the wild. Fellow. Wow. So a lot of the times while they're standing next to each other and pushing each other, trying to get some leverage over each other, they'll push each other into trees and sharp branches and edges and so that's where a lot of this, you know, scarring will, will occur on a on a giraffe. Huh. Oh my god, everything is here. Everybody's here. how they all hang out together. Yeah. You know, there's no competition between them. Thank you. 